Well, hello everybody. Happy Friday. Hope you guys are having a great week wherever you are. I hope the weather has been nice. We have had some pretty good weather here. I seem to always talk about the weather. Are you guys as interested in the weather as I am? <laughs> I love weather. So that's why I'm always commenting on it. But anyhow, I hope you guys are good. We are creeping our way towards Thanksgiving. How did we get here? I have no idea. That means Christmas is on my brain. Um, I'm sure some of you are starting to think about it as well. Um, you know, I noticed this week that I haven't seen very many Christmas commercials on TV. Have you guys, have you guys seen a lot of Christmas commercials? I, um, haven't seen very many. Maybe I'm just fast forwarding for all the commercials. Maybe. <laughs> Who knows? All right. Let me give the dogs a treat. Hey guys. Good to see you. Good to see you. Hello. Hello. Okay. So I have trained them like Pavlov's dog. Every time they hear me, here Mac. Every time they hear me talking now, they come running for a cookie. Here you go. Because they know that I'll give them a cookie so that they won't bug me. <laughs> That's bad. Oh my goodness. Okay, good to see you guys. Let me pull you up um, on Facebook. I'm a little like out of it. We, um, oh patience, you've been seeing Christmas commercials. You know, I've got a really weird, well, maybe it's not weird, maybe it's smart, with my TV. I, I have the TV on all day. I'm that kind of person. I have shows I like to watch all day while I'm working. I will delay watching them so that then I can fast forward through the commercials. Do you guys do that? Like if you wait and start a show 15 minutes in, then you can rewind it to the start and then you can fast forward through all the commercials. So maybe that's why I haven't heard the commercials. Yeah, I know. I work all day, but I always have my television on. Um, I don't know. That's just how I am. Okay, so today, Stampin' Up! has, um, we have this event happening right now called On Stage. If you're a demonstrator, you know. Um, it used to be our convention, um, which we would have in the summer. And it was so awesome. It was in Salt Lake City. Then they changed it. I don't know how many years it's been, five, six years, to have these um twice a year events and the one in november is kind of the end of the year recap you know all of that in november and it was in different places but because of the c word we won't say it they haven't had a live event in a couple of years now it feels like so we've had that online starting yesterday and then today and i'm you know when i'm listening to the tv i can get things done no problem but when that is on i have been so distracted I've been trying to print out um, mailing labels today for my retreats and my classes and texting my friends back and forth as we're listening to On Stage. I have just been like a mess. Like I, <laughs> I obviously don't really listen to the TV as closely as I think I do when I'm working. But anyhow, it's good to see you guys. I'm glad you're here. You know what I meant to do? Let me share this over to my business page. Do, do, do. So... In Sirwin Family News, Addie made the basketball team. You guys, last week I was super nervous, super nervous, super nervous for her. Went and picked her up and she made the team. Yay, we're so excited for her. She lives and breathes basketball these days. So it's exciting um, to make the school team. Our, our school, where she's at and the high school, are really competitive and it's really, really hard to make the sports team. So. I, that's why I was nervous, <laughs> but she did. So she, she's worked a little tail off. So thank you for all the thoughts you guys were sending out to us last week. We greatly appreciate it. Okay. So let's get started. Um, I have a few things to mention. So I think I told you guys last week that I got way ahead. If you follow me on Instagram, you might've seen, um, all the cutting that I've been doing. I, between my retreat project there's eight projects in each retreat box the pillow box class there's six in there the card class there's 10 cards in that class and club create there's five in there I have cut over 3,000 projects in I said seven days it's probably been more like eight or nine days over the last eight or nine days I have cut over 3,000 projects die cut sorted packed organized and I did that because I really wanted to get these Christmas classes out to you guys earlier than projected. So the good news is that if you order the pillow box treats class, which is this one, it will be shipping next week. 
I am, of course, if you got the retreat to go, it's going to go in your retreat box, which will probably go out Friday, probably Friday. Um, I ordered, well, I don't want to tell you something is being handmade and it won't be ready till Wednesday. So that means I will get them late on Wednesday, put them in the boxes Thursday, seal them up, mail them Friday. Okay. If you got the pillow box class to go or the be jolly card class to go, those will ship out next week too. Sometime probably in the middle of the week. And I had said the 27th. So I am way ahead of the game. I'm so happy. Now these registration, they're, they're like a mess because I've been using them to cut projects. The registration for both the um, Be Jolly card class, which has 10 cards. It uses this adorable stamp set. The registration for this is still open as well as the pillow box treats class, which uses a pillow box die, that is still open too. They are open until the 14th, which is Sunday. I have cut, fingers crossed, what I believe is the amount that I need. <laughs> so not now 100 of you don't go register because then I won't have enough, but I believe I have cut enough for everybody who's gonna register, fingers crossed. Um, if not, I'll be able to cut a few more next week, get them out early. Now, what I have to do is order, you know, the product. I don't order the product until you've registered. So everybody's registered, I've ordered all your product. Um, but if you register here in the next few days, I won't order your project product till Monday and your class will go out towards the end of the week. I always expedite that shipping too, to get it here earlier, to get it out to you faster. So those two Christmas classes, those are my last Christmas classes of 2021. They will be going out at the end of next week. Registration for the two card class and treats class is open through Sunday. Um, you have to email me for that registration link. I don't usually check my emails on the weekends, but I will periodically check them this weekend. Um, so make sure you send me that email. Don't send me an email Sunday night, okay? <laughs> Registration closes on Sunday. That means you need to be registered before Sunday night when I close it. Okay? My procrastinating friends out there, you know who you are. <laughs> you know who you are. You know, you can either be a procrastinator or a chronically early person. And that's what I am. I'm a chronically early. I'm too early to everything. I... I register for things as soon as it opens and then I can't remember if I've registered. So, you know, it's a problem either way. <laughs> either way you go. Okay, so those two um, PDFs for those will always be available in my PDF store from here until whenever, 20 years from now. Um, they're immediately downloaded, emailed to you. Now, the retreat boxes, that's this. That is the um, Frosted Gingerbread Projects and some super cute pillow gifts. That is closed, sold out in 24 hours. <laughs> Denise, you're funny. Um, but the PDF is available in my PDF store. There's eight projects on there. So if you would like to get that PDF, it features the little memories and more cards, um, as well as the bundle and the paper and all the um, frosted gingerbread uh, stuff, the sweet the very beginning of the catalog, okay? So that PDF is available. If you're looking for my PDF store, go to my blog, pinkbucker.com, click the link, well, there's buttons across the top and there's one that says PDF store, so you can click that. And if you order a PDF and it doesn't show up within like five minutes, check your uh, spam folder. And if it's not there, email me, because that happens. I don't know why it happens, but it happens. Um, email is not 100% reliable, as we know. Nothing is 100% reliable these days. Not the mail, not UPS, not email, nothing. And even Messenger, somebody said, they sent, sent me a screenshot of a message they sent me this week, never got it. So who knows? Craziness, I tell you, craziness. Okay, big news, all right? So Stampin' Up, okay, so you guys know Thanksgiving's coming up. We have Black Friday, big sales, everybody, right? There's always big sales. Stampin' Up! in the years past has started doing things differently, kind of backing up and doing the sale the week before Thanksgiving to avoid all the craziness. And they're doing that again. So Stampin' Up!'s big sale. In the years past, they've called it the Holiday Extravaganza Sale. This year has a new name, Seasonal Sale. 
I think it should have a more creative name than that, but they didn't ask me. Anyway, seasonal sale. <laughs> Terry, thank you. Um, you don't want to look up close. That's all I can say. Um, seasonal sale. That's, you can think Black Friday type sale the week before Thanksgiving. That'll be next week from the 16th to the 18th of November. All of all cardstock will be 10% off, All which 10% doesn't sound like a lot, but think of it as free shipping because our shipping is 10% after when you get up to $70, it's 10%. So if you were to save 10% on $70 worth of cardstock, you've basically covered your shipping. All right. That's how I try to think of 10%. Inks are 15%. Inks make great Christmas presents. If you don't have all your Stampin' Up! inks, see mine right here? If you don't have all yours, send that link to your spouse, your sister, your mom, whoever wants to Christmas shop with you, and let them know that next week they're 15% off. Then the third thing that's on sale are all of our dyes, 20% off, okay? So there are, we have dyes that are bundled with stamp sets, and when you buy them bundled with stamp sets, you save 10%. This is better. So if you buy them separately, you will save 20% on the dies. Sometimes dies don't have a matching stamp set or you just want the dies and not the stamp set. This would be a great time to get those dies. They're, they're gonna be 20% off. Um, there's also the Give It A Whirl dies. Those don't have a matching stamp set. There is the Picture This dies. Those don't have a matching stamp set. So make sure you go through your catalog, see what you want. If you don't feel like you can buy yourself something right now, send that link to whoever is your Santa and tell them to buy you some craft stuff. Um, I've already sent my husband several links <laughs> to things that I want. So keep that in mind. On the flip side, maybe this is a good um, opportunity for you to shop for your mom, your sister, your aunt, your cousin, your best friend, your neighbor, whoever loves Stampin' Up, whoever likes crafts. This would be a good time to get them a really nice gift. Uh, Judy, tailored tags, that's a good one. That is a good one. Yeah, that doesn't have a matching stamp set. This is a great time to buy a really nice gift for someone and save 20% off on those, okay? So 16th through 18th, which is Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Now, I will give you a new host code next week. So if you want to earn next week's make and takes during that sale, um, you can, I'll give you, it'll be a new host code. Um, next week we are doing Christmas season, the little pine cone, the stamp set, it doesn't have any words, but it has pine cones. You guys know what I'm talking about? That's the stamp set we're doing. Um, I believe we have two cards and a 3D. So you can earn those for free. I will give you, I will send out that host code within my email and put it on Facebook also. Um, okay, Diana, let's see. Diana says, what are your top three items you would buy? Oh, that's very hard. Stampin' Dimensionals. No. <laughs> um, get the Stampin' Dimensionals and the paper snaps, but those aren't in the sale. My top three things that I would buy. Oh, that is so hard. Okay, those tailored tags that Judy mentioned, tailored tags dies. Get those for sure. If you don't have those, get those. The border, basic border dies. That's another set that doesn't have a matching stamp set. Oh, Cynthia, Jinx. Basic borders, those are some of my favorite dies, basic borders. Um, the Give It A Whirl die, you know, the little one that has the little, I, I have not used that, we really should, I really should use that in a Facebook Friday. It's the one that has a little spinner. Those are really good. Um, and then I would just look at the dies, like if you have bought a stamp set but didn't wanna buy the dies because maybe you were like, nah, I'm not gonna buy those. I'm gonna save money. Well, buy them now, right? They're 20% off. No, no punches on sales, just dyes, ink, and cardstock. All of the ink, I saw somebody asked that, I went by, all of the ink will be on sale, um, but not the ink bundles. They've turned ink bundles off. Stampin' Up! starting to experience some of the supply issues, and there's something with the ink, um, ink pads or something that's getting kind of low. Um, so they've turned, you can't buy them as a bundle, but you can buy them individually. Hey, Kate, congratulations, Kate. I saw your little video this morning. Kate won the Heart of Stampin' Up! Award. She's doing some amazing, uh, I guess you would call it charity work in the next year and Stampin' Up! is gonna partner with her. Congratulations, Kate, that is so exciting. Oh, that's so exciting, I'm glad I saw you. Um, okay, so, no, three things, that's it. Cardstock, 
ink, dyes, nothing else. But all these other things you guys are asking about, you know you can get those in the starter kit, right? The starter kit is $75 right now. That's it. And I know people have said Stampin' Up! has discounted the starter kit in the past. I don't remember a time when they've ever discounted the starter kit. $75, you pick out $125 in product. What percentage of that? Somebody tell me. That's not 50% off, but that's what? Terry, is Terry on here? Terry could tell me. How much are you saving when you buy a starter kit at $75 and you get $125 in product? I cannot do that math. <laughs> but if you want those things, the punches, um, the specialty DSP, get the starter kit. And then, yeah, Debbie, you get your discount on the sales stuff. When you, when you buy the starter kit, you then are a demo and you get 20% off everything including sale prices. So if the dies are 20% off and you have a demo discount of 20% off, I can do that math. That's 40% off, right? So maybe a little bit. Yeah. My math skills are eh. <laughs> Kim says 40%. Is that so 75% $75 is 40% off of $125. You guys know what I mean. You're saving 40% something like that. I can do 50% off. <laughs> I can't do that backwards math. Anyways, if you want these other things, think about that starter kit. There's not, I don't put any pressure on you guys to do anything. Um, there's, you really have nothing to lose if you buy the starter kit. I always get asked, what are the, what are the monthly minimums? Well, there's no monthly minimums. The minimum, we have a quarterly minimum that is $300. But when you join, that doesn't start until the, the, the next quarter. So if you were to buy the starter kit now, you would not have to meet your minimums until the end of March, right? January, February, March. So you have a long time. Then they even give you a, like a grace month of April. Even if you weren't able to meet your minimums, there's no penalty. I had somebody ask me one time, do I have to pay back... If I don't meet my minimums, do I have to pay? What do I have to pay back to Stampin' Up? Nothing. You just become a customer again and you lose your discount. That's the only thing. So if you're thinking about getting that starter kit, which is 40% off, everybody's telling me, <laughs> getting basically 40% off everything you put in your starter kit, it's $75. Free shipping, which we all are suckers for free shipping, right? Um, you can be your one and only customer, which means you only order stuff for yourself. You can be your, your only customer and then maybe a couple friends. Maybe you have a couple of friends who like Stampin' Up! They can order from you too. Or maybe you're like, you know what? I'm sick of my job. I want to do something else. I want to try having a side gig. Um, it can be whatever you want to make it. All right. There's no pressure. But anyway, it's a really good time to look at that starter kit um, <laughs> no, Maria, demos are not allowed to get another starter kit, if only. <laughs> a lot of times there's things we want to get in the starter kits. Um, and then we've got celebration coming. I saw the brand new celebration catalog last night. That'll be starting in January, and it is so good. I'm so excited about it. Oh, yeah, Nancy, you get a free paper pumpkin kit in your starter kit. Look at you guys. It's like a team effort today. Thank you for reminding me. I always forget about the paper pumpkin. When you get a starter kit, they put one of the old past paper pumpkins into your starter kit. So that's pretty amazing. And Ruth has a very good point. $300 retail is your minimum, but with your discount, you're really only paying $240. I know. Look at all the math, all of the math people today. <laughs> you guys are great. Okay, so those are two things coming up. If you're going to buy cardstock, ink pads, or dies, don't do it until the 16th. What is that? What did I say? Tuesday. Okay, so hold off and do it on Tuesday, okay? Um, <laughs> maybe our husbands need a starter kit. That's funny. Um, tell your husband, if you don't have a starter kit, tell him you need the starter kit and, and maybe he'll buy you that for Christmas. I mean, he you have to be a part of it, obviously. I always caution when I say that. But, you know, my husband's like, what do you want for Christmas? Whatever. Okay, here. Here's the money. Go buy it. If you have that kind of husband, then maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Anyhow, be watching for this. I'll send out an email on Monday about that with a new host code for that. Okay? 
Okay, I talked about the starter kit, talked about the sale. It's already 20. We gotta go, go, go. we gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta go, because today's projects were kind of long. Um, let me give you a few details. All-star tutorial bundle. Now, this is gonna get confusing because I have this, I'm using Sweet Symmetry two different times. The November All-Star Tutorial features Sweet Symmetry. It is uh, uh, 12 tutorials designed by 12 different designers. I have only designed one of them. We put them all together. They're all videos. You get this for free um, if you spend $50 with me online. I, e I just emailed them out right before I went live. If you uh, put in an order in the last week and a half and you didn't get this from me, please let me know. My project this month is a cute little box. Um, there's a link to this at the bottom of my page. It's also available in um, my PDF store for those of you that maybe you're a demo or you have a demo and you don't want to put an order in, but you want the PDF. Okay, so there's that, right? That's separate from what I'm getting ready to show you. Just so happens that Club Create for December features Sweet Symmetry also. Club Create is my subscription program. It is $39 a month. You get about $20 in product in your kit every month and five projects, a video and a PDF, and that $39 includes the shipping. Um, you subscribe and it will charge you every month on the day that you subscribe until you cancel it. If you wanna sign up for one month and cancel it, no, there's no penalty. You could cancel any time, but if you stay for six months, you get $25 in product credit. So this is the December um, project. It's basically a gift set of cards with the holder. You're gonna make the holder, it's very cute. And it features a really cheap bundle. I didn't realize how cheap this bundle is, $39, $29, $29. That's so cheap, right? Am I? I'm right, right? <laughs> Anyhow, that's what this is. Um, if this, if you don't have the prod, the stamp set that I'm featuring in each month, you can always substitute what you have. Sometimes um, it might be harder, like with the little dog and cats. Uh, maybe that one would have been a little bit harder to sub, but this one is flowers. You could sub, you know. That subscription period is open until December 7th, and those kits will ship right before Christmas, okay? All right, the link to that, also I'll put it in the video today. It's at the bottom of my blog post, I think. And at the top of my blog, there's a Club Create tab, okay? Okay, there's that, put that away. Um, okay, okay, prizes. Remember last week I forgot to pull out prizes? Well, I just made a little, a little goodie. How about a little goodie bundle of Stampin' Blends and those what my mom refers to now as a weapon, because <laughs> they're very sharp, the snips. So Karen Bull and Kale Miles, congratulations to both of you. I will send these to you in the mail for free if you will email me your mailing addresses. Um, they shared the video um, either on Facebook or on YouTube, and I just randomly chose two people for prizes. So thank you so much. I do appreciate when you share my video. It does help us find new customers. This week, Speaking of the cute little dog and cat, I've got two bundles to give away. So if you would like to win one of the sweet little stockings bundles next week, all you have to do is share. And then like Melinda just said, type in shared so I know that you have shared. All right, Facebook Friday. If you have not joined me for Facebook Friday before, welcome. I always do three projects um, centered around one product. This week we are doing, where to go, where to go? The Words of Cheer Bundle. Um, love this set. I love word dies. So I, you know I had to I had to feature this one. Um, there is a free PDF over at pinkbuckaroo.com. I will update the video here um, when I'm done with that direct link if you can't find it. Free PDF under the last photo has all the measurements and the supply list as well as links to most everything that I talked about. Um, I don't think I put Club Create on, Club Create on there, I forgot but you guys can find it at the bottom of my blog post. Um, and then if you put in an order between now and Monday at midnight, if it's not <laughs> cardstock, ink, or um, dyes, because you're gonna wait on those, so you can get your sale price. If you're gonna order anything else between now and Monday at midnight, I will send you today's projects for free. They look like this. You will need the bundle, um, ink, and the, the one embossing, or the two embossing folders that I use. I don't do any embossing. But I will do other die cut, shapes that aren't included in the bundle circles and chevron i mean um rick rack whatever you need all right so that deadline is monday at midnight 
Um, I will make a list Tuesday morning, cut them all Tuesday, pack them, mail them on Wednesday morning, okay? And there's a host code attached. Um, you will see it. Let's see, I am running out of space. You will see that host code when I flip the camera over. It's also on the PDF and on my blog post. So make sure you use that host code unless your order is over $150. Don't use the host code because then you're going to earn stamp and rewards. And I will still send you the make and takes for free. Okay. All right. I'm going to flip you guys over. Today, we're doing a lot of coloring with stamp and blends. And that slows things down. So, you know, I always say, I'm not going to talk very long. But look, today I talked like for a really long time. So let's see. Let me get all this situated. Hold on. Let's see. I'm going to zoom into a little bit, maybe, so that you can see when I color. All right. Okay. Um, I was just going to tell you guys something. I had something of the tip of my tongue. What was it? I do not remember. Or don't you hate that? Ugh, I don't know. I can't remember what it was. All right. How are we looking? We are not real, real straight. That is the host code. Um, and I know I'm zoomed in because you guys, we're going to do some coloring and you need to be able to see that. Okay. All right. Darn it. There was something I was going to ask you guys. Well, maybe it'll come to me in a minute. All right, let's get started. My first card, we are going to color on um, crumb cake cardstock. Um, this, this stamp set has got this large floral image, which I really, really like. If you are a Stampin' Blends girl like me, you're going to want to um, color these with Stampin' Blends. You can watercolor. You can... Um, use uh, watercolor pencils, whatever you want. But I'm gonna use Stampin' Blends on this first project. And then we're gonna use these word dies as well. The good thing about this floral image is there's no fussy cutting. There is a die that matches and that cuts it out, which we all know and love, right? Love it. Okay. I'm so distracted by what I was gonna ask you guys. And it entered my mind again and now I forgot. Oh my gosh. All right. <laughs> <laughs> let's get started we're gonna do the coloring first okay I'm using um cherry nope real red and soft succulent the card stock is evening evergreen that soft succulent and evening evergreen are one of my or one of our um in colors they uh are new in colors so they're around for this year and next year's catalog um, now, I wanted the image on this crumb cake to be kind of muted. I didn't want it to be real strong. Um, as you can see, you can't, you can't really see the lines of the image a whole lot. Um, and I started with, Pepper says hello. I started with crumb cake ink on my crumb cake cardstock, and it was too dark. I tried stamping off, and then it was too light. So we're going to use an ink I hardly ever use, and that is Sahara Sand. All right, let's see. How do I want to do this? I'm going to just kind of get it right in the corner. I put a foam mat underneath because this is a large photopolymer stamp. And um, sometimes they, depending on your work surface, sometimes they like kind of bubble in the middle and you can't get a really clear you know, it kind of makes a dome in the middle, if that, if that makes sense. So if you have that problem, I've, I've told you guys this before, I don't have that problem over on my work counter where I stamp, but on this table, for some reason, I always have that problem. So just use your foam, either your piercing mat, which look at my, how disgusting my piercing mat is, but that will work too. Um, your foam piece, I think that's the foam piece for my Stamparatus, piece of fun foam whatever it'll work all right now <laughs> pepper they say hello all right now i'm going to start with light real red all right and i'm going to use the bullet end of my um real red light and when you start coloring the the the, the line that we've stamped the image line is going to kind of disappear at first because when the Stampin' Blends goes on this colored cardstock, it's very dark, but it will lighten up. It lightens up as it dries. And then that, um, that line 
from the image will pop out, pop through. When I did the crumb cake ink, when I did full strength ink, it just was really dark. Um, and it didn't give that kind of soft, subtle look that I was going for. But when I stamped it off first, it was too light. And then I couldn't see what I was doing. The line really disappeared and I could not see where I was coloring. So Sahara Sand is a good kind of middle, middle ground. Now I'm taking my dark, real red, and adding in some lines here where um, the petals are overlapping. That would create a shadow. And we're just gonna create a little bit darker like that, okay? So we're gonna repeat this all the way around. And maybe I can think about, while I'm coloring, what it was I was gonna ask you. Now, we're coming up to a weird time. So next Friday will be our last regularly scheduled Facebook Friday, I think, because I'm gonna do 12 days of Christmas Facebook Lives again after Thanksgiving. I'll take the Friday of Thanksgiving week off and then we will resume with daily Facebook Lives for 12 days of Christmas and we'll do two projects each day. So I'm gonna start hitting all of those stamp sets and things that I haven't done yet. I may pull out some of the ones that we use for classes and we're just gonna kind of do like speed dating for Christmas. <laughs> speed Christmas. We're gonna do two projects a day. It'll be fun. We did it last year and I gave away prizes every day. It was really fun. So we're gonna do that. Um, and then it'll be, we'll be getting close to Christmas and I take two weeks off around Christmas time. Um, and to prepare, well, to spend time with my family, but also to prepare for the new spring catalog. I'm so excited about it, you guys. I saw it last night and it is fresh and trendy and there's bright colors and lots of fun spring images. And then, of course, we have celebration coming up in... Um, January, February. Feels like we just stopped. We just finished celebration, didn't we? But this is the OG celebration, <laughs> the original celebration that we always have every year in, in the winter, January and February. Um, and there's a new catalog. It's got paper, it's got stamps, and it's got super duper cute, 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 cute stuff. All right. Now, one thing that we're gonna have to keep in mind is that there's a supply chain crisis. I'm sure you guys have seen. So some of that, we, we don't know yet, but some of it might, you know, be stuck. And we might not have access to all of it right away. But that's okay, we can't buy all of it right away, right? All right, I'm taking my dark, real red, and coloring in those berries. If you guys haven't colored on colored cardstock with your Stampin' Blends, I highly recommend it. Um, the Stampin' Blends really behave differently on the colored cardstock. It's just, I don't even know how to really explain it. Um, it's almost like they bleed a little bit more, but in a good way, does that make sense? All right, now I'm gonna take um, light, soft succulent. Is this the light? Yes. And I'm gonna color in these leaves, and I'm also going to kind of outline those sprigs right there. What do you call that? I said yesterday it was like a fern, but it's not a fern. <laughs> it's like a pine branch, maybe? These little spiky ones. Oh, you guys know, I don't know the names of plants. Um, but yes new amazing things coming up. If you buy the starter kit, like we were just talking about, one of the perks is that you will get to see that catalog and get to order from it early. That is another perk. So just keep that in mind as you think about that starter kit, 40%. <laughs> um, right, 40% off. Basically when you buy $125 in product, for just $75, you're saving 
40% off, say all my math friends. Oh look, I forgot that flower completely. This is quite a big image and I stamped it twice, but if you like to color, you're really gonna like to color this. It's really fun. So I saw Denise is on here. Denise is helping me get ready for my retreat in a box, my retreat to go. She is working super hard to help me. She helped me um, run around town trying to find something. <laughs> we hit up a lot of stores. Yes, um, evergreen pine needles, pine bow. Yeah, you guys, you got it. You know what I'm talking about. The little spiky needles, like a Christmas tree branch. But yes, Denise is helping me get ready. And I'm gonna take a picture. I have a room right off this off of my office. We it used to be our dining room and we turned it into just kind of a sitting room, a little TV room. And now it's basically my storage area um, where I have all my boxes and boxes and boxes of things for my events. Um, usually it's just a couple of boxes in there, but right now it is chock full. Now this dark color looks like a whole lot darker, but it is actually soft succulent dark. And I'm gonna take the light evening evergreen and just put in some lines there to add some shadow. All right, so there we go. Um, I'm making sure I got everything colored. If you want to see that in closer up fashion, it will. there is a clean recording over on my YouTube channel. All right. Oh, I know what I was going to tell you. I remembered. Okay. So when you do a Facebook Live, Facebook usually gives you the option to save the video to your phone. And then I take that video and I upload it to YouTube for all my YouTube friends. Lately, that has changed. Over the last couple months, it only gives me that option about 50% of the time. And then only about 50% of that time does it actually save. So then I'm having to go over to Facebook and download it from Facebook, which loses a lot of the quality. Last week, that's what I did, turned around, uploaded to YouTube, and realized later that night that it only downloaded three minutes of the video. And would only, it would only download three minutes of the video. I'm gonna flick this on here, you guys. All right, this uh, soft succulent ink to give us a little more. So if you happen to watch recording last week, the quality may not have been the best because what I ended up having to do was screen record, play the whole Facebook Live on my phone and record it as a screen record. <laughs> the things we do, I don't know why, but one of my downline even said today she's having trouble with the same thing. So hopefully the recording will be available. I don't know, we may have to start doing YouTube Live. I'm not sure what's happening. All right, I'm putting this in the Timeless Textures Embossing Folder and we're gonna give it some texture. But before we do that, we're also gonna bring over the words. Yeah, Debbie, I'm hearing it's, it's doing it to a lot of people. They have us, they, I mean, we have, we're at their mercy, really. We, we just, you know, those of us that do Facebook Lives, it's just becoming difficult. And I know a lot of people have made that, um, you know, move over to um, YouTube. I just, it's gonna require some <laughs> thinking and learning on my part and I just haven't taken the time. Um, yes, it does look vintage. I'm glad you like that, Nina. That's the that's exact word I needed, vintage. I was saying soft, subtle, but vintage is the right word. Okay, we're gonna cut out this top layer, the happy, in soft succulent, I've put adhesive sheet on the back so we can turn it into a sticker. And we're gonna cut out the larger back portion of the words in evening evergreen, okay? So let me pull this whole thing out and then we're gonna do that embossing. Adhesive sheets, you know, so somebody asked me at the beginning my top three things would be to buy <laughs> and Immediately, I think of adhesives. I know that's kind of silly, but I love the adhesive sheets and I love dimensionals. Those aren't gonna be in the sale, but you can add them to your order. They're not very expensive. 
All right, so we've got that, we've got that. Now, we're gonna take both of those off, and we're gonna put this on here, and we're gonna put number four on top. At <laughs> least, and then you can get rid of it. I know, don't we all feel like that about, I don't wanna say it. We all kind of feel that way about FB right now. Just kind of a toxic, I know, I know. I, uh, I need to do some, I need to do some research. I need to talk to some of my friends who are doing it. Um, I know that I could probably do it simultaneously, live, but that would, you know, the last time I tried to, to do something to upgrade my Facebook Lives, it was a disaster. Those of you who probably remember, I tried to do this, the two cameras that everybody's doing, right? Where you can look at one camera and you switch it, but the, I just could not get the quality to be good. And then it was a disaster. It was awful. And I, you know, basically like threw it. I mean, I didn't throw it, but I wanted to just throw it all, you know, like forget it. And I haven't given it another try because I just, <sighs> technology is stressful. All right. I'm going to peel off this backing. I, I could figure out the software. No problem. I just could not figure out why the quality wasn't good. The quality was awful. And I hated that I was wasting, you know, an hour, an hour and a half of live with bad quality. Because then, you, you know, ugh, can't undo it. All right, so I've peeled that backing off. And we're going to put this soft succulent top layer onto the evening evergreen back layer. It's a sticker. There you go. Isn't that pretty? We're going to put this on here with our mini dimensionals. Thanks for sharing, Maria. We've got this one, we've got this one, and we've got this one. And we're gonna put that right there. Now, I don't know why I went with this color scheme, but remember, if you want to do other colors, do other colors. You don't have to do these colors. I think the reason I started with these colors, honestly, was because I wanted to use our new Ever Eden paper. Um, and that these are the colors, that soft succulent and, um, where's my red? Soft succulent and Evening Evergreen. And then I ended up not using it. I don't know. I, I think that's how I ended up with this color scheme. We are gonna use that paper in the next project. The Ever Eden. I'm gonna stamp this little Christmas right here, just on a white strip. The Ever Eden is a um, release, an early, which I have to take that back, you guys. I thought the whole suite, the Garden of Eden suite of products that Stampin' Up! released, I thought all of it was from the new catalog, but correct me if I'm wrong, you guys, who my other demo friends who have seen that new catalog, that, that Ever Eden paper is not in the new spring catalog, correct? It's just the bundle that's in the new catalog. So if you like that Ever Eden designer series paper, you need to get it. All right, so many dimensionals, happy Christmas. I like that saying, happy Christmas. I think that's cute. All right, let's put it together. We're almost done. I told you this... Yee, these projects take a long time today. Um, I'm gonna mat this on a piece of evening evergreen. All right. I love that texture too. After you have colored something and then you um, run it through an embossing folder, it's really neat. All right, we're gonna add some dimensionals. We're gonna do an evening evergreen card base. Um, right, less just the bundle, no DSP or elements. Yeah, so just the bundle. The so so the the little gems aren't in the new catalog either, right? The gems, I finally got those. Let's see, let me show you guys. Do I have them right here? The Ever Eden gems. I wanted to show y'all. What did I do with them? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Here they are. The the Ever the evening. What, e hello. Garden of Eden product suite that's available only online right now. These are the gems, aren't they pretty? All right, anyway. <laughs> anyway, all right, we're gonna add a few red rhinestones. 
And with our take your pick tool, you can use that little putty end, put them on there. And I think I'll do one right there and then boom, done. Look, no bow. I didn't put a bow on it this week. I know, shocking, isn't it? All right, what do you guys think? Vintage feel? As Nina says, I like that description, a vintage feel. Oh wait, I have this too, we gotta put this inside. Um, one thing I did not do, but you could do, because this is evening evergreen, and it's a dark card base, you need to put a piece of white on the inside, and you can just stamp that flower there, and you can color it or not. I mean, nothing says you have to color it. Um, but put that piece of white in there and then there. Boom. All right. Card number one. We are done. Let's move all of this out of the way. Now, card number two, I am calling mixed media. And I don't really know if that's the correct look, correct description, but we're going to use several different coloring mediums, okay? We're going to use salmon blends. We're also going to use a watercolor pencil. We're going to use a blender pen, not to be confused with a stamp and blends, and Wink of Stella. So to me, that's mixed media, wouldn't you guys say? A little mixed media. Okay, this card does feature the Ever Eden designer series paper, the one I was just talking about. Um, and I'm gonna show you something else. Um, that paper is only available online. Okay, that paper right there. You'll notice, look, this is our card we made last week. Do you guys notice it's the same? That's because I was trying to design a project for my mystery stamping I did with my team. And I couldn't come up with anything. And I had started this and I didn't finish it. And I was like, well, and then I did this one. So similar layouts, totally different cards. Don't be afraid to use the same layout. Case yourself. You know, you can do that. And a lot of times, no one will even notice because they look so different. We use different products and different, you know, um, images. It's going to look different. All right, let's start this time. We are going to stamp, and I need to clean my stamp. Did I put it away? Oh, yeah, I did. Um, we're going to stamp this time on colored cardstock. Where is my chamois? We are going to stamp this time in soft succulent. That's the color in the Eden of Garden. This would be beautiful spring colors and stamps. Ruth, you're right. You are absolutely right. I think that this stamp, why am I missing? Oh, right here. I think that this stamp doesn't have to be Christmassy. I don't know, what do you guys think? I think it could be, I mean, you could really do any colors. All right, now I'm gonna stamp this right here. I'm gonna do this twice. Ah, oh, I didn't use my foam mat. Let's try that again. I'm gonna stamp this. <laughs> Twice because it's gonna we're gonna need to cover both sides of the paper. Okay, let's see, let's do like that. And then I've got kind of a blank space right there, so I'll just stamp it like that. Okay. Alright, now I wanted to do white flowers and really the white um, watercolor pencil is kind of our only option. Um, yes, we have white ink, and you could try to color with that, but I think that the white pencil is so much easier, so much less messy, and it's easy. We all know how to color with colored pencils, right? Now these are watercolor pencils, which means water will move the ink around. I'm not gonna use a water painter. I'm gonna use a, a blender pen. And if you guys have not seen a blender pen before, it looks like kind of like our Stampin' Write markers. And they come with just some kind of solvent on the inside. It's just, I mean, it's, it has the, 
wetness of a marker. It's not real drippy like the, the water painter. And you're gonna have a whole lot more control with this than you are going to with a um, water painter. So if the water painters are intimidating to you, try the blender pen. You can use a blender pen with your watercolor pencils like this. You can also, um, you know, you know how we do watercoloring and we put ink here. You can use it kind of like a paintbrush where you pick up the ink and you color, pick up the ink and you color. Um, it's kind of a great way if you, if you haven't done any watercoloring, this is kind of a great little intro into that. Um, now one word of caution here is that it will pick up that ink, that soft succulent ink. So try to just color within the leaves or the petals as you go and not try not to drag the color from the um, soft succulent ink through the image because then your, your white will not be as white. Um, I think I did mention that there are clean recordings of all three projects today over on my YouTube channel. They should all be linked also on my blog post today. So if you want to come back and watch, you can. They go a lot faster. When I pre-record things, I can edit out <laughs> the dogs barking and the mistakes and the distractions and so that it's just a straight shot of, you know, stamping. All right, now here's the other thing that you can do. And I realized this after I had done all this, I said, I want to add some glitter to those leaves. So I'm going to take my Wink of Stella and I'm going to add it. Whoops, I've got a little bit of fuzz. I'm going to add Wink of Stella here. And then I realized, you know, a Wink of Stella brush works just like a blender pen. So you could probably skip even the water, the blender pen step. This will take that watercolor pencil and smear it around and smooth it out. And you'll lose all the little, you know, the pencil marks and it'll make it nice and smooth. And it'll look like, um, you know, it's colored in nicely. So, but again, the um, Wink of Stella will pick up that color. So you gotta be careful and not you know, go crazy. Okay, now we're gonna take our um, light um, soft succulent, that's the word I'm looking for, and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna color in. I'm not gonna do any kind of shading here. I'm just adding some color. And you'll notice that at first, whoa, the color is so dark, but it lightens up a lot. Um, the light soft succulent on this soft succulent cardstock almost, you know, it's almost unnoticeable. Um, but on some of the colors, like if you were to use a light color stamp and blend on the same color cardstock, a lot of times it is unnoticeable. Here you can still see it, but it does. So you can see right there already, it's starting to lighten up. Um, I'm always kind of shocked the first time. I'm like, oh, and then I think, okay, wait, that's going to lighten up. All right, so now we're gonna go with our dark soft succulent and color in the holly. I'm not gonna do any shading here, just to keep it simple. Do, 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 do. Uh, da, da, da. I have been giving some thought to my class to go for December, you guys, and I'm gonna run something by you. I think, this is real red dark, by the way, that I'm doing the berries. I think what I've decided to do, we did a calendar last year, if you remember, with the little animals. It was so fun and so cute. I wanted to do another calendar, but we really don't have a stamp set that is like a one that could be used for 12 months, you know what I'm saying? I mean, we actually have the calendar stamp, but I mean for the decorations, for the cute stuff. So I think what we're going to do is I'm going to do, I think, 
I'm just, I'm just running ideas right now by you guys. I'm going to do a calendar class using that calendar stamp set that we have. Show you guys how to use it. It's really cool. And then I'm going to use all the stamp sets that I have used in Club Create in the last 12 months. So if you've been part of Club Create, you'll have most of those already. Or you can substitute whatever you have. Does that sound like a plan, you guys? I mean, typically you can substitute, you know, whatever you have. But I, I really wanted to do a calendar class and I just couldn't settle on one stamp set that could do all 12 months as far as cute pictures. So I think it'll be kind of based on all the stamp sets we've used in Club Create. That's still kind of in the process, the working it out in my mind, but I think that's what we're gonna do for December. All right, so I put a stitch scalloped real red border right there. Put that on there. We are gonna stamp this sentiment on basic white, sending you Christmas cheer right there. And I'm gonna leave that there for a second so that I don't smear it. Then we're gonna get these other little dies. I mean, this set has got a ton of dies. We've got sprigs, we've got holly, we've got sprigs. <laughs> sprigs and holly. And we're gonna cut those out and make a little arrangement behind our sentiment. So let me bring this back over. Does that sound like fun, you guys? Hi, Robin. Yeah, okay, all right, you guys are encouraging. It's kind of daunting to think about planning a 12 month calendar. That's a lot of work, <laughs> a lot of thought, a lot of, uh, you know, brain exercise goes into that. Um, but I will get working on that over Thanksgiving. Okay, so we're gonna do holly, the holly leaves on evening evergreen. We're gonna do one of the sprigs on soft succulent and the other sprig on real red. It was, Debbie, last year's was a lot of work. That calendar was a lot of work, but so cute. It was all the coloring and um, die cutting those little pieces. What was that stamp set? Menagerie, something menagerie. That was such a fun stamp set. I really liked that class. Okay, so we've got those. Now I'm gonna come and punch this out with the tailored, tailored, no, what is this called? See, it get, I get confused with the tailored, this is the tailored tag punch. The, the dies are called tailor-made tags, right? This is the tailored tag and those are tailor-made tags. <laughs> oh my gosh, the names, the names. I wonder if Stampin' Up! has a committee. It's like the naming committee and they name all the things. Because you know, they can't ever, they can't ever use a name they've used in the past. They've got to come up with new names every time. And I bet that's really, really hard. Becky, I, she says I'm running late. Well, guess what? I am too. <laughs> I'm only on project number two. All right, we're gonna make a little arrangement in each corner. So I'm just gonna take these and kind of arrange them like this, like that. So we'll add two down here, like that. And we'll do this one here. And I think we're gonna make this one a little bit bigger than that one. All right, so I've got them all arranged. I'm gonna put adhesive right here and I'm just gonna pick those up like that. Boop, see how I did that? And I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Make that little noise. Hold on, gotta get that one up. Boop, there we go, okay? Now, to make sure they stay in place and I am down to the edges of my dimensionals, let's use them. Don't want them to go to waste. I'm gonna sandwich those pieces. I mean, we do have adhesive on them, but just for good measure, we'll put the a dimensional on that as well. Let's put one in the middle. Kimberly, I'm quick because this is the third time I've made the project. You see, by the time I get to Facebook Live, I've already made it twice. And that does make you quick, for sure. Okay, last but not least, let's add some elegant trim. On my original, um, I used the silver, but I am now out of silver, so <laughs> we're gonna use gold. Gold works just as well. Doesn't matter. 
There we go. I love the way this elegant trim, what's it called? It's, not, it's simply elegant. I like the way it ties. It always kind of lays down just right. All right, now I gotta put a piece of white on the inside because again, we have a dark card base. And done. I love that card. Mm, I don't know, I can't pick a favorite today. You guys like it? Mixed media, mixing up your coloring mediums. Okay, we are down to the last card. Actually, it's not a card. We're doing a 3D project. We are doing a 3D project. And I'm excited to tell you that this project is actually a case of a, some, a box somebody sent me for my birthday. You guys remember when I got all those amazing things for my birthday? This is the box right here I got. Now, I have a problem because I'm, I'm not, now you can tell it's coming apart because I, I dissected it. There we go. I believe it was Ruth who sent me this box. Ruth, if you're watching, I think it was you. If you guys remember, my daughter got into some of my stuff before I did because she was looking for her phone case. And some of the things got mixed up. I went back to rewatch my Facebook Live from that day. And I said I thought it was from Ruth, the box. had um, I believe it had some really cute earrings in it. So, Ruth, if it's not you, then, some, then somebody will tell me, right? Somebody will tell me who sent it to me. Because it's so cute. I've saved it. I love it. All right, let me get all my goodies off of this tray. And then I'm going to show you how to make it. I somehow, <laughs> this is gonna sound ridiculous, I somehow injured underneath my nail. Have you guys ever poked yourself under your nail with something and then it hurts? And I can't really even remember what I, what I did. But every time I pick up a paper, like if I pick it up like that and it pokes, oh, it's like torture. Okay, <laughs> random, sorry. Here's the box, the original, so cute. Here is the Christmas version. I think it's pretty darn cute. Let's make the box first, all right? And remember, these measurements are on that PDF over there, that free PDF. Oh, Ruth, you're here, it was you, right? Yes, okay, good, 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 good. Well, I'm casing you, it's so cute. Thank you for sending it to me. Um, you're gonna need and I dissected roots so I could figure out all the measurements. You are going to need, let me look at my notes, six and a half by eight and a half, thick, basic white. You're going to score the long side at three, four, seven, and eight. Yeah, that's right. And then um, score the short side at half an inch, one and a half inches, and five and a half inches, okay? Now, before we do anything else, we're gonna add a couple of diagonal score lines here. Actually, we're gonna cut first. And look, along one edge, you've got two rows, right? That's the top. And down here, you've got one row, that's the bottom. Up here on the top, we're gonna cut the completely the top row off, except for that one right there. So do that first. Okay. There we go. Now, we're gonna add those score lines. You're gonna need your stylus or your bone folder and a ruler and a pencil. And basically, we want to put diagonal lines here so that it will pinch, pinch close. This section is one inch wide, so just make a little mark at the half inch mark just right in the middle okay and then take your ruler and either your stylus from your simply scored or your bone folder put your ruler at that little tick mark line and the bottom corner and make a score line okay and do the same thing there and the same thing there 
Oh my gosh, Nina. She says, I ran a sewing machine needle through my fingernail once. Needle broken. Oh, oh, oh my gosh, Nina. How do you recover from something like that? I don't think I could sew after that. <sighs> well, you know, long time ago, they that's how people, they would torture in certain societies, you know, like sticking things under the nails. Oh God, it hurts so bad. So, so bad. Oh, Nina, I'm going to have nightmares about that. <laughs> okay. Yesterday when I was making this video, I forgot to do this part. Don't forget to do this part. Pinch those lines you just made. Okay. Because if you don't, then it's pointless and they're not going to pinch in. Oh, I have the heebie-jeebies now, man. All right. Um, <laughs> I think we're all going to have nightmares. Burnish all your lines. My mom was a big sewer. She always had that sewing machine going. And uh, I don't know. I'm sure she's done something similar to that. But ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, you've got a skinny edge right here. That's where we're going to put our adhesive. So we're going to cut off the two little rectangles on each end. And we're going to just cut kind of at a diagonal there. We are done up here cutting. We don't need to do any more cutting up here. But down here, we need to cut these score lines and we're gonna cut the corners off of the square tabs. Okay. There we go. Now we're gonna do one more thing before we put it together. Actually, we're gonna do something else before we put it together too. I've got the, the punch that has no name. And it has no name because I can never remember the name of it. Ever, 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 ever. The detailed trio punch, I just looked on the list. We're gonna round these tabs. See how I'm just folding these sides in to get it to go in? I always wanna call it the triple corner punch, but it's not. It's a detailed trio punch. It has three things on there. Okay, now we're gonna put this together, but before we do that, let's put on the adhesive. I'm gonna make the front, I'm gonna have this little thing is going to fold in to close your box like this. So that's gonna be actually the front side, okay? And I am using some of my favorite paper, of course, the Buffalo Check Gingham um, from the, what's it called? What's it called? Peaceful Place Designer Series Paper. I should write these things down on my hands, the things that I can't remember. That's why I type it up. You'd think I'd remember it after typing it, but no. All right, the measurements of these pieces are also over there on that PDF. This is the paper that matched the paper pumpkin box that we had last month. Oh my gosh, I forgot. I should have printed it out. We have a new paper pumpkin coming next month and it's cute. It's puns. Um, I'll, I'll have the print out next week. It is adorable. It's adorable. That'll be for December. Okay, now I'm going to take some tear and tape. And we're going to put some tear and tape right there. Okay. And peel that off. Come on, dude, let's go. There we go. Fold that in, fold that over, and it should line up perfectly like that. Now, you know, did Ruth put, no, she didn't put paper on the back either. Yeah, see, I don't really think you need paper on the back, but if you feel like you need paper on the back, just cut another piece. It's three by four, so you're gonna make it two and seven eighths by three and seven eighths, or two and three fourths by three and three fourths, depending on how close you want it to the edge. Fold up that bottom and now pinch those little, those little guys in right there. You know what? I shouldn't have cut that little square off, should I? You know what I'm talking about? When I cut off that long edge, let me show you. When I cut off that long edge right here and I said cut off both those corners, don't cut off that corner right there. Leave it because now this is not connected. It'll still work, but you needed to leave that. That's why I had that there so I would look at it and cut it the right way, and I 
didn't even look at it. So then you just pinch this and fold it in and it stays closed if you don't cut that little tab off. It's all right, I'll fix it, see? <laughs> like that, that's how it is. Mm. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to do some surgery over there. All right, isn't that cute? It's like a little house. Very cute, very, very cute. Okay, now let's make the tag. We're gonna stamp that image one more time. And this time I have actually pre-colored it, but I am gonna show you how I colored it this time. Let me clean it. <laughs> Nancy, did I match the plaid? Probably because I cut it all from the same piece. That's probably why it all matches. All right, this time I need to get my little pad also. Do, do, do. Where'd it go? All right, well, we'll use the junky one. This time we're going memento black. Ooh, I can already tell I didn't ink it very well. Let's do that again. Let's do it the right way. Let's do it the right way, Erica. There we go. That's the way you do it. All right, now this time I'm coloring things a little bit differently, okay? I'm gonna use Old Olive and Real Red. I think a little bit of Mossy Meadow and for the berries, we're gonna use Blackberry Bliss. All right, so we're gonna color those flowers exactly the same way. And this time, because we're using white, Cardstock. I feel like we have a little more room to play with the blending and the colors. Um, when you when you color on colored cardstock, I feel like you can't do the shading as much, you know, as is intended with these. But here, what is on my finger? Tear and tape. But here, on the whites, you can. All right, so give it a full coat of real red light. And then get your real red dark. And I'm gonna add a dark line wherever the petals are overlapping. That creates a shadow and dimension, gives your flower dimension. And you just think about wherever a petal is laying over another petal, it's creating a shadow. And that's where you wanna add a little bit of dark. And then you could take your light again and just blend those colors out towards the outer edges of the petals. Now I'm not gonna color all of them because I already have it done, but I wanted to show you, you can take your color lifter and brush the ends of the petals and that will give them an even lighter feel, like the light is touching them. And I also am gonna run the color lifter there on that middle flower to lighten it up because it's on the top, it would be the lightest. Okay, so then I'm just gonna take light old olive and we'll do those leaves like that. We'll do our branch also in the same way I just like to outline it. Our pine needles, our, I don't know, our, our bow. <laughs> All right, now for the um, holly leaf, I'm gonna start with dark old olive. Okay, fill it in. And then I'm gonna take light mossy meadow and again wherever that that petal the uh, flower is overlapping you know that seems even a little too light let's try dark mossy meadow yeah let's do dark so i'm adding a shadow right there where that petal would overlap and then i'm going to outline those veins like that okay so you're you're just adding lots of dimension there so you would do that to all of them. And then last but not least, Blackberry Bliss Berries. Blackberry Bliss Berries. Say that three times real fast. Okay? And then when you are done, you are going to have a finished image somewhere on your table. 
<laughs> here it is. Ta -da! Okay. All right. So we're going to cut that out. I told you guys it had a matching die. Thank you, Stampin' Up, for getting us a matching die. So we're going to cut that out. I have ahead of time cut out a real red label. This is from the Hippo dies, the Hippo and Friends. You know, that, that Hippo set has some great label um, shapes in it. I use them a lot. All right, and then we're going to also emboss. We're going to emboss that label with the Merry Music. Merry music, Merry Melody, Merry Melody embossing folder. All right, so this will line up at some point. You gotta just turn it, turn it, turn it, and see if you can figure out where, I think I had it right the first time, where it lines up. You wanna look at all the points of contact, make sure they're all lined up there. Run that through. Okay. And then we're gonna switch over. Again, we'll take plates two and three off. Get our Merry Melody um, label. And we'll set that in there. If you put the Stampin' Up! logo on the top, that's your, let's see, how do I word that? You want the logo on the top so that this side of your cardstock will have the raised image. Okay. Run that through, plate number four. And there we go. We used this embossing folder last week, I believe. And last but not least, let's put this on here with some dimensionals, which again, I'm having to go all the way down to the edge. I don't like doing that. Oh. Goodness, goodness, goodness. Hi, buddy. What you doing? Don't have any cookies. I already had one. All right, we're gonna put that right there. Now we're gonna get that elegant trim again. And I'm gonna wrap it around my fingers. I think two times is enough. Two times. And I really wish I had a full sheet of dimensionals here. I'm gonna stick this on with dimensionals on the sides. So I'm gonna take one and stick it down like that. Kind of arrange it how I want it. Put that one down like that. Well, now that's too like nice and neat. We want it to be kind of messy. Hmm. All right, well, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and then I've got a white label that was cut with the ornate layer dies. And we're going to stamp wishing you a joyful Christmas in Old Olive. I really like this font from this same Words of Cheer stamp set. <laughs> yeah, you know, I can't... I. I can never throw a sheet of dimensionals away without using all of them. These work really good when you need like a long skinny something. I usually try to save them for that. Or or um, when, you're mat when you're putting like a matted piece onto a card base. Those are great for that too. All right, and then we're going to put that there like that. There we go. There we go. Now everything's laying the way they should. Okay, but wait, there's more. I haven't used these yet. Look at these. These are our, what are they called? Gold holly leaves. Did I put that on the, I did not put that on the supply list. Gold holly leaves. These are from the holiday catalog and they are really fun. They're really sparkly. And I'm just gonna slip a few back here to kind of carry over that gold color. You know, we use the gray and white designer series paper. So you really want a, a colorful and bright sparkly tag that will jump right off there there we go okay and last but not least bring over my injured box and we will get our dimensionals and we'll use these two long ones put those right there and right there all right, now last but not least, this will stay closed. Let me just show you this one. See how it stays closed? 
if you don't cut that one tab off that I cut. Um, the ribbon is our real red ruffled ribbon, say that three times, and it is on back order until it says the week of the 15th, so it should be back in stock next week. Um, it is really fun. And we will do a glue dot, a mini glue dot, and we're just going to put it right here so it looks like the box is tied together, but it's not because that little scalloped little lip will hold it shut. And there you go. Put candy in there. Easy peasy. Fill it up and you've got a really beautiful treat. Thank you, Ruth, for the inspiration. I really love this box and it's been sitting on my counter now for two months waiting for me to case it. Okay, we made it. Almost an hour and a half. Yikes. Sorry, guys. Um, let's look. We made a box. We made a card with several different coloring medium. And we made that one. Vintage. Nina gave us the perfect descriptive word. Vintage. There are videos of these all on YouTube in case you need them. I have a fourth project for you. Um, that will post on Monday. It doesn't have a video because <laughs> um, I want to show you these little holes here. I saw one of, I believe it was one of the artisan design team members made a card where they had all these holes and it's this right here, this little die that has all these little holes in it. Um, I'm guessing these are holly berries. That's what that's designed for. But look, how fun of a background that makes on that card. And then I use the cheer. I don't know what happened there. I used the cheer, the other word dies. Did tone on tone, uh, white on white. I added Wink of Stella to that top layer. Um, and then on the inside, I did a little bit of that. So that'll be on Monday. Another way to use this. Um, I think that these dies are really, really cool. Um, at first, even at second glance, as I was, I felt like I was discovering more and more things about them. I, I, these are flowers right here, little points out of flowers. Um, so it's a great bundle. I highly encourage you to get it. Words of cheer. Um, it's available in the current holiday catalog. Okay, you guys, that is it. Next week, I'll be back again at 2 o'clock with um, Christmas season bundle. It doesn't sound right. The Christmas season bundle, the ones with the pine cones. Um, and that sale starts on Tuesday. If you want next week's projects, when you order your, if you order during the sale next week, I'll have a new host code for you for that. All right, guys, make sure you grab that free PDF. I will upload um, this to YouTube, fingers crossed. I'll add all the links. And don't forget the, that um, if you want to register for either of those two classes, the deadline is Sunday. So email me sooner rather than later. You guys have a wonderful weekend. Thanks for joining me today and I will see you next Friday. Bye guys.